Jonathan. With David and Jonathan is a top jockey whose most obsessive fan is actually a six-year-old boy called Jonathan Williams. It's a lovely sight to see the little fellow bouncing up and down on young Jonathan's knee. <laughs> Thank you for touring. Weird Gary and Rory is a former snooker player who could have made the big time like Jimmy the Whirlwind White or Alex Hurricane Higgins. But all the good weather nicknames have been taken. Please welcome Sean, slight chance of rain in the afternoon, Mio. <laughs> Now we've set off with our excuses round, David, Jonathan and Frankie. Your excuse comes from Chelsea's favourite slaphead, our old friend Frank LeBeuf. LeBeuf recently claimed that all Premiership players hate him and want to see him hurt. Good play by Frank LeBeuf. Oh, and he was caught by Andy Boo. Oh, that's a nasty challenge. Oh, Sutton's in trouble. Oh, there was a clear snap on the move. So, what excuse did he give for his unpopularity with his fellow professionals, David's team? He's, um, he is himself known as being a bit of a dirty player, isn't he? I think he was sent off in his last game, wasn't he? Yes. He's, he'll, yeah. he'll have your legs quicker than polio normally, won't he? I mean, he goes... <laughs> <laughs> so, he's not very really popular with his fellow professionals. I mean, he's about as popular as Graham Wicks at a Bewitched gig. <laughs> Um, it might just be that, the sort of lack of popularity, gentlemen. It's probably he's the odd one out at Chelsea, isn't he? He's the one who can speak English. Really. Yeah, I don't understand. What's a Frenchman doing in an Italian team? <laughs> As you say. <laughs> Frank LeBeuf is, ha is half Roland deodorant, you know. <laughs> On his father's side. His mother was a French mother. <laughs> he has Roland deodorant jeans in him. <laughs> what about you don't hear him and do this? He goes like this. <laughs> during the war then, eh? You know what though, I, seriously though, I'm a bit worried about the kind of anti-French tide which is sweeping the country and this show often, you know, panders to that. Because previously Europe, I mean, we're just about getting united. For many years we were separated by the Iron Curtain. I would hate to see a massive beef curtain descend. <laughs> from Marseille to Moscow. Imagine that, an enormous beef curtain. <laughs> Um, I don't know, LeBeuf, I think I actually, um, I think I do know the answer to this. I mean, obviously, he's French, you know, but I think it's Lineker's fault. Because uh, he was on this show, and he didn't know many answers, and I think Gary said to him, you can just, just sit back and say, I don't care, I won the World Cup. And he said it, and then all the uh, slightly stupider footballers out there took it quite seriously, and believed him to be very arrogant, and started having him on a regular basis. Here's the correct answer for three points, yeah. Well done. Yeah, apparently it is all to do with this show. When he appeared as a guest on this programme, Frank humorously gave the same answer to every question. I don't care. Oh, I won the World Cup. That's right. <laughs> now, according to Frank, it was meant to be funny, but I came across as arrogant. I didn't realise how it would come across, but Gary Lineker said it would be fine. <laughs> So it's all Gary's fault, although how thick would a Premiership footballer have to be to take Frank's remarks on this show seriously? As it happens, they would all have been a lot crosser if they'd seen the stuff we edited out. Your Premiership players are all gay. You wear your mother's bras, I sleep with your wives, and they all have the faces of pigs. So we couldn't find someone who could do a French accent? No. The Burf is now the 19th most fouled player in the country. The most fouled is England golden boy Alan Shearer, who every week has to endure a series of defenders cynically assaulting his elbow with their faces. <laughs> the Burf says that in the Man United game, David Beckham ran over and called him Big Ears. It was the name of a character out of the last book that Posh had read to him. <laughs> Rory and Sean, it's Steffi Graf's latest squeeze for you, Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi was so bad a year ago, he went out of Wimbledon in the second round to the world number 44, Tommy Haas. He's done it. It's a huge win for Haas. Then suddenly this summer he came good again, lifting the French Open title and becoming world number one. So what was the reason he gave for this sudden turnaround? 
He split up with his wife and then got more centred and he wanted to rekindle his rival rivalry with Pete Sampras at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Brooke, something to do with um, shaving his chest. I know that um, tennis players lose their form if they shave their chest. I know Billy Jean King did. <laughs> He was seeing books, she was for ages, and she was very famous, she was a virgin, wasn't she? Mm. And I heard that she went like a train, but if it was a virgin train, it would mean that he wasn't getting much. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't start off, and eventually she wouldn't go all the way, would she? So he would be running on empty. <laughs> if I could just finish the joke, right? Um, she cuts his balls off, and then the, the umpire goes, um, Miss Shields leads by one set to love new balls, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing quite well, aren't I? <laughs> It wasn't that he, he played Tim Henman in every round, was it? No. no. I don't care anyway, it's tennis. It is recently yeah. with Ryan. <laughs> I do, I, I care about tennis. I think it's great that he's got to world number Says one. Says it all, doesn't it? And he still stayed there. <laughs> he still say, stayed there despite the fact he's now going out with a graph, which I believe he announced to um, Boris Becker during the uh, beer festival in, in Germany. Yeah, and yeah. predictably, Tim Henman was there but didn't get past the first round. <laughs> Is it a drugs thing? The fact that I'm seeing dragons coming out the carpet. <laughs> break up Brooke Shields. The break up with Brooke Shields. Yeah, I'll give you three points Ooh, for that. Yeah. For that. Yeah. Have you seen oh, that? Yeah. Have you seen reckons the key to his bad form was his marriage to Brooke Shields. So he divorced her in April and a month later he was French Open champion. Curiously, Andre Medvedev, who was Agassi's opponent in the French Open final, claimed he did so well because he'd found love with German tennis star Anke Huber. She inspires me. I write her music. I write her poems. Still, you've got to be bloody careful, haven't you, writing poems to a girl called Anke. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three oh, points. Boy. We press on with what's going on. We show the team some unusual sports-related footage and ask them to explain what it's all about. Gary's team, it's football, but not as we know it. So what was that all about, do we think? Mm. It, look, it looked like something Gazza had done in the bath, actually. <laughs> I think I'm joking. You've actually... <laughs> Do you, do you yeah. bathe with Gaza often? Or? <laughs> Nowadays, but no. you know, when we play together. <laughs> <laughs> You've eaten octopus, haven't you? I bet it was in Japan, wasn't it? It was in Japan, yeah. I had a, went out with three Japanese guys and they took me to this seafood restaurant. And um, they brought, after the meal, they brought in this huge octopus as the, as the main course. And it started to wriggle in its eye was sort of bright purple. And I thought, well, that's nice, they're going to take it away and cook it now. But they didn't. This woman came in with this huge sabre and went, bosh, chopped its leg off and put it straight in my bowl. But <laughs> you they, they were waiting, I had to eat it. It's for England. Mind you, is anyone eating still wriggling in my mouth? Oh. 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 Lovely. Do you think, do you think when you left the restaurant, they said, if that doesn't send the ball in Barcelona? <laughs> Have you guys ever eaten lobster? Yeah, I love a bit of lobster. Yeah. I, I don't think the way they serve lobster is wrong, you know. You order it, the whole thing shows up completely intact. Hedge hill claws just staring out in a plate. And they give you a hammer and a pair of pliers with a lobster. <laughs> so when the bill came, I said, look, I bank at NatWest, you can break in and get the money. <laughs> uh, there's actually a jellyfish called Linnea, isn't there? There's a, there's a I jellyfish, know. I think, who's done it before, in Portsmouth Sea Life Centre called Gary Linnea. It's deadly, but only from two yards. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering whether that, that um, octopus actually called semen. Mm. Whether the yes. Was, yep. There were a few... Those fish swimming around it, were they place? Were they playing a flat back four? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw... Only five more shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're really playing against Wales. <laughs> <laughs> England, England, Scotland type thing. They're reenacting re a match? Yep, England, Scotland, correct. Yep, I'll give you the points for that. Yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> I'd have given you the points anyway just to stop the fish jokes, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, that was Seaman, the resident goalkeeping octopus at Portsmouth Sea Life Centre, taking part in a reconstruction of last week's Euro 2000 playoff. They've actually got a much better and more agile octopus called Nigel, but he's never allowed in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> a 
one stage it looked as though that reconstruction wasn't going to happen if the Polish octopus had got a result in Sweden. <laughs> David's team, we take you to a race meeting in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. <laughs> So what do we think was happening there? Didn't you see how happy they were? Yeah. I think they were so happy that John McQueen it was in there, they were all cheering. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do the jockeys think of, um, of uh, John McQueen? Do you, do you, do you know guys who know who he is, don't you? Yeah. He's a guy who looks like a werewolf dressed as Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> I he must be the only guy in the world who can't say to his kids, you're not going out dressed like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs down. Yeah. Thumbs no good. Down. You don't like him? I don't mind it, but a lot of people don't like him. But I don't dress like him. Exactly. Actually, stand up. You say because you dress well like me. Don't stand up. Say look. Look, it's Billy Boy. I have no idea what's going on, but uh, Jeffrey Archer swears he was there. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you another question? You know, you know when you ride a winner, and then we will, we will, we will have it, obviously, and then they go stewards' inquiry, and they say a horse has been disqualified for interfering with another horse. What does that mean? <laughs> yes, that happens a lot, actually. <laughs> well, I've never seen that on grandstand, you know, see a horse going like that and go... <laughs> and the other one is that their horse disqualified for putting another horse off, which I'd love to see. Wanker, stop it! <laughs> actually, you said it was Malaysia. Yep. Because uh, in Korea, I know, if that was like greyhound racing, they eat the dogs, don't they? Mm -hmm. And when you place a bet, you have to not only choose a number, but you also have to say whether you want it with rice or vegetables. <laughs> It's the only place where race under starters orders has an entirely different meaning. Because <laughs> the Malaysians, they, they're famous, they love gambling. They and do. I imagine, it's rather like, when, if we want to see a boxing match, it is in this country, you'll go and watch it on TV, or, and you'll gamble and you'll enjoy it from there. So maybe they're, they're gambling on another race, which isn't just happening there. I'll give you three points for that. Well, yeah. 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 It was race day at the Sun and Gore Turf Club at Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, although the race in question was actually taking place a couple of hundred miles away in Penang. Betting shops are illegal in Islamic Malaysia, so the punters have to go to the racetrack and sit in the stands if they want to flutter. The system over there is so advanced that even though the races are taking place 200 miles away, the bookies find out the results the minute they happen, and in many cases, the day before they happen. <laughs> Malaysia hosted the Commonwealth Games in 1998 and not surprisingly the authorities there were particularly strict with athletes who failed drug tests. In fact, the entire Canadian snowboarding team were beheaded. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Yeah. Our next round celebrates the art of terrace wit as we play Sing When You're Winning. We play a pair of football chants and then stop the song before the end. We want our teams to guess what the final line is. Gary's team, it's one of the early favourites for next season's first division, Premiership table proppers, Bradford City. The Premiership is upside down. The Premiership is upside down. So what follows? The Premiership, the premiership is, is upside down. The Premiership 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 is upside down. The Occasionally, yeah, but that's not the one we want. Oh. I was convinced. And then yeah. at the end, Lionel Richie comes on and goes, Hello! <laughs> <laughs> the Premiership yeah. is upside down. The Premiership is upside down. And so is Rory's face. <laughs> well, it is occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm, you know, no offence to me, I'm not really a big football fan. If you walk around London for five minutes in London, people always walk up, Oi mate, what football team do you support? And you go, well, I don't really support football. What, are you gay? <laughs> no, but I wish you were, and then you'd dress better. <laughs> <laughs> but I love those guys. Thanks very much. So, which, part, which part of London is this you're wandering around? <laughs> I don't want to say, I'll take the fifth on that. <laughs> Sadly, that doesn't rhyme with the Premiership is upside down. <laughs> the Premiership is upside down. The Premiership is up upside down. down but the, the Premiership the is right upside way. down, down, deeper and down. <laughs> 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 
They sing a medley of the anything inside out? What about inside out? Inside out. Is that, no, that's Diana Ross. Diana Ross, yeah. Oh, I'd like to see that. They already have a Heathrow. <laughs> The Premiership is upside down, the Premiership is upside down. We deserve to be the winners because Bedford is quite a pretty little town which is twinned with cans. <laughs> Say Premiership again. <laughs> this is how the ditty really continues. The Premiership is upside down. The Premiership is upside down. We're in Europe with the Wednesday, and the leagues are going down. We hear leagues, we hear leagues, we hear leagues. Close. You were close. I can't believe we didn't get that. You were close. <laughs> J.B. Priestley once had a brief spell at Bradford City, but his career came to an end after they were knocked out of the FA Cup at Carlisle, when Agatha Christie rifled one in from 30 yards. <laughs> Bradford's last trophy was the FA Cup, which they won in 1911. Of course, football was very different in those days. If you got injured, the trainer ran onto the pitch with a magic leech. <laughs> <laughs> so no thoughts there. OK, David's team, we step up a class for you. Hereford United, whose cup run this year has earned them a tie at Leicester in the third round. And this is their song. <laughs> OK. So up against Leicester, are they? Yeah, yeah. it's your old team, isn't it, Gary? It is. So it's plain sailing, plain sailing to Wembley for Hereford, then. You're making us look good now. Yeah. <laughs> Because when you were there, of course, you took them right to the middle. <laughs> How about, and we really shake them up like a British nanny in America, because we're <laughs> winning the cup. <laughs> Am I close, Nick? You're closer. Hereford. Hereford. They're famous for their cider. Hereford, yeah. Our cider. Our cider's good. Our cider's bad. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frankie, the lips are moving. I just can't understand <laughs> Arms Park, that's a, it's a sort of a Welsh Cup yeah. thing. We're on the March of Boys Army, we're going to the Arms Park, and we're really shaking them up when we win the Welsh Cup. We're the only English club who are going to win the Welsh Cup, because they are the only English club that plays in... They're not the only ones, no, but that's not too far off. And we're really I just can't look at you, David, without thinking of you as the defendant with two lawyers on the side. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm going to give you the points. Oh, yeah, the, points. the manic. Yeah, forgetting the Welsh Cup reference, yeah. yeah Let's have a look at what they actually sing. And we really shake them up when we win the Welsh Cup. Because there's an orange purple team. Yeah. Yeah. This is a reference to their victory in the 1990 Welsh Cup final against Wrexham. Hereford's mascot is a real live bull, which they lead onto the pitch before big games, which was bad news for the Kidderminster mascot, two men in a pantomime cow suit. <laughs> <laughs> Hereford Cathedral is home to some of the world's oldest documents. There's the Mappa Mundi, an early illuminated Bible, and a vitriolic manuscript which attacks the men of England for narrowly losing at home to the Picts in the qualifier for Euro 1000. <laughs> At the end of that round, Gary's team have six points, but David's team have nine. Yeah. Time now for our teams to get all touchy-feely as we play Field of Sportsman. Gary and Rory, it's you first. You put your blindfolds on. Gary looks like a really bad superhero, doesn't he, today? <laughs> Next man. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's BHS Mail Order Man. <laughs> okay, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Oh. Yes. Oh. It's like Gary Scott. It might be a girl. <laughs> well, 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 I say. Rory. Rubber. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Is that enough? 
<laughs> I say. Great legs. Reminds me of Stuart Pearce. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that you, Gary? Yeah. Gloves. <laughs> uh, it's water sports. I might have your phone number somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, the instruments. In, it's, um, are Hello? we talking? Hello. What's this? Hang on. I think I've pulled. Hello. I'm pulling away, yeah? Is it skiing? Yes, what, what sort? Um, slalom. Oh, element. correct, I'll give you three points right. for that. Yes, yes, yes. So, David and Jonathan, to your places, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, it's that superhero. Colour Clash Man. <laughs> Fat Colour Clash Man. <laughs> OK, can we have our second mystery guest, please? And your time starts now. <laughs> Where's he coming from? What the? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> can of break beans or something. What's going on? So if I sound funny, I'm feeling a little hoarse tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Where? A little hoarse. He's on a little hoarse. Is he a jockey? Right. Can we see a jockey? What's this? <laughs> Who's there? Oh. You got a can opener, David. <laughs> it's what Gary Glitter wears in the shower these days. <laughs> he's on a horse, isn't he? He's wearing what a suit of armour. What sort of suit? Is it, what if it's armour? What are we talking Jousting? What are we talking about? Is there anything? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Level? Right. Well, <laughs> he's uh, so the 16th century jousting champion exhumed and brought forth. Alphonse de Ponce, the 16th century <laughs> jousting champion. <laughs> As he was outlawed in about 1822. He's like a British, European. English, British. Thank you, English. The English jousting champion, Mark Vance. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> 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 He can go back to his other job now, which involves just standing in your hallway, David. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have found him on Mothy and Hooks? <laughs> Stay there. Look at that. So at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. Oh, yeah. As ever, we finish with the name game. The team in front goes first, which is David's team. Well done, David. Pass those along. As many names as you can get in 90 seconds. No, no looking, thank you. In 90 seconds. <laughs> good luck, Jonathan. Yeah, Starting. Wait, wait, wait a sec. OK. Now. Right, he's so, a uh, tennis player. Um, he's, uh, he seems to be pretty good, but he loses all the time. Tim Hammond. OK. Uh, uh, the, this guy is uh, Slaphead. He sounds like he should design clothes. Um, it's, uh, he's the Chelsea manager. He's yeah. Yeah. Yep. OK, you yeah, got him. All right, he's a jockey, famously mean bloke. He's a uh, fiddle the taxman, I believe. He's probably Let's a friend of yours. Yeah, yeah. Second OK, this is... Uh, Okay. He's an England cricketer, he's a batsman, opening batsman. Um, no such thing. He chops up meat. He would chuck up meat. Put and Mark yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, okay. This guy, he drives for Fuawi. He's He drives the Italian car. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's a play boy, good looking boy. He's uh, Irish and he drives for oh, the Italian car. There you got him. Okay, okay uh, Mark, this is, uh, we know this guy is. He's he's really the car, will yeah. you shut up? I'm trying to work here. <laughs> Everyone fouls him. We were talking about him earlier. But there you go. Okay, this guy, his name sounds like he's very fat. He's a racehorse yeah. trainer. He's like Gross. a drink like Guinness. Uh, like at Macaston. Stout, stout, Michael Stout. Um, okay, this one, she, uh, she, everyone thought she was shagging Cliff Richard, but she wasn't. She looks like an old, uh, like an <laughs> old leather bag. Too bad. Yeah, okay, you got it. Um, <laughs> oh, um, this is like a little piggly thing. You sometimes get in fancy meals. And, uh, it's, uh, no, it's not a gherkin. <laughs> pickle gherkin. You have them, I'm sure. It's, it's like a, it's, yeah, there you go. What's his first name? Paul. I no, sure. not Paul. That could be Paul. It's like a place in Africa. He's a basketball player. You don't know, do you? Rhymes with Henya. 
No. Can you? Know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this guy, he makes things. He would like make things. He's a flat jockey. You would know him. He's a flat jockey, and his name's like uh, used to be Peter Wingard. Used to play a detective called something. You don't know Peter Wingard, oh, obviously. Right. <laughs> he wasn't big in Italy then. I don't know. I just like the idea of you asking Frankie about Peter Wingard's <laughs> career. <laughs> now, a point off there for rhyming, I'm afraid, so you go to 20 points rather than 21, which means that 12 will win it for you, Rory. Oh, God. He hates losing. <laughs> <laughs> and your time starts now. Oh, hang on. All right, time starts now. <laughs> um, F Fulham chairman, Harrods, Tony Farrow. Al Fayed. Yeah. Um, What's his name? Mohammed. Mohammed. Uh, um, snooker player, same surname as yours. Tony, Tony Mia. Yeah. Um, same name as that uh, gay bloke in the suit over there. Twat. <laughs> Jonathan <laughs> Ross is correct. Um, Eight-legged eight, eight, eight goalkeeper. Eight-legged goalkeeper? Yeah. Eight-legged? Baby Seaman. Yeah, very oh, yeah. good, yeah. Uh, he's a golfer, north of the border, country we've beat them. In Wisdom? Scotland. Yeah, um, first name. Oh, that, uh, Paul Zane, Scotland. Zane, Scotland, yeah. Um, this is a football, his first name is the same name as um, McNanaman. Uh, um, and he's a Scottish, he's got a Scottish name at the beginning. M M M yeah, but a bit of a Welsh name at the end. Um, <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, Swedish for Andrew, which you'll know. Limpar had the same name. Anders. And it's green stuff that comes out your nose. <laughs> Anders snot. No, Anders. <laughs> it's a posh, posh word for snot. You get it in your throat. Flem. Flem, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, he, uh, Sparky Hughes has the same Christian name Mark. as. Yeah, and this is w things that grow in the ground. You wear them in your, uh, you know. Uh, Poppy. Uh, no, more flowers. Yeah, flowers. Flower, flower, wet stuff in the morning. No. Dew. Dew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Movie star uh, Pitt. Has Brad, Brad Pitt. Brad. And this is um, <laughs> second. Um, it's a sort of American toilet. John. John. But it's a, it's a completely uh, <laughs> authentic one. Real John. Yeah. Genuine John. Yeah. Big John. Um. <laughs> um, a rugby player, a rugby position in the front row. Hook either side. Um, flanker. No. <laughs> Proper John. Proper John. Very good. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, second net. A valiant effort. Gary's team have 18, but this week's winners is David's team with 20. Sean, David, Jonathan and Frankie. We're all off to eat semen in his own ink. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. I think it's all over. It is now. Don't forget there's a Match of the Day special later. Highlights of Arsenal versus FC Nantes in the UEFA Cup. That's at midnight here on BBC One. And next up, weird and wonderful commercials with Joe Brand. <laughs>